Day 28, Comfort of the Afflicted, Pray for Us. Nothing will be refused him, neither by Our Lady nor by his glorious Son, St. Francis de Sick. Comforting the afflicted is a work of mercy. The Church has seven spiritual works of mercy and seven corporal works of mercy. The works of mercy help us to be devout followers of Jesus Christ by serving others. They help us to be like Joseph. The seven corporal works of mercy feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, visit the prisoners, comfort the sick, bury the dead. The seven spiritual works of mercy teach the ignorant, pray for the living and the dead, correct sinners, console those in doubt, console the sorrowful, bear wrongs patiently, forgive wrongs willingly. Comfort of the afflicted can also be translated solace of the miserable or solace of those in misery. Experience misery or feeling miserable is not pleasant. Yet the reality is that we are all going to have miserable moments in life. This world is a valley of tears and everyone is going to suffer. There is no way around it. Whether it's financial problems, marital hardships, psychological struggles, difficulties in relationships, the death of loved ones, or a thousand other woes, we will all experience misery in life. It's good to have someone we can turn to for comfort and solace in such times. Joseph will comfort you in the difficult times. Life is filled with many sorrows. Loved ones will die. Children sometimes rebel and gravity will eventually take away your youthfulness, making you old and immobile. No matter what life brings, however, Joseph will always be your consolation, comfort, and solace. He knows well the hardships of life. He is a kind of loving father. He comforts everyone who comes to him in times of affliction. His fatherhood is unlike any other. Let us commend ourselves to our good father, St. Joseph, who is the patriarch of troubled people, since he himself went through so much trouble. St. Joseph Morello. A loving father provides comfort to his children, especially when they are going through difficulties. A father's wisdom and perseverance are reassuring and life-giving. Knowing you always can go to your father in difficult times reassures you that everything will be okay. Even when the world seems to be falling apart, regrettably, many people have never experienced this kind of love from their, a father. Many people today have grown up with emotionally abusive distance and less than virtuous fathers. This has led many people to experience great anxieties and fears in life, as well as a tremendous sense of insecurity. God wants you to rest in St. Joseph's fatherhood. St. Joseph will never abandon you. No matter what your experience of fatherhood has been, Joseph will always be there for you. He is your spiritual dad, and he loves you. He will never hurt you. He would give his life for you a million times over. When life has you down, run to your spiritual father. Pour out your heart to him. Tell him your troubles. He is the most loving of fathers. He is always available to you, always attentive, always understanding. If discouragement overwhelms you, think of the faith of Joseph. If an anxiety has its grip on you, think of the hope of Joseph. If aspiration or hatred seizes you, think of the love of Joseph. Who was the first man to set eyes on the human face of God and the person of the infant conceived by the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Virgin Mary? Let us praise and thank Christ for having drawn so close to us and for giving us Joseph as an example and model of love, Pope Benedict XVI. Pious Union of St. Joseph Will he, the great saint, whom Jesus and Mary obeyed, who provided Jesus and Mary with their daily bread, be invoked in vain? No. St. Luigi Ganella St. Joseph is never invoked in vain. Jesus had total confidence in the comforting love of his virginal father. Jesus wants us to experience the wonders of living in union with Joseph as well. 
Which one of you would hand his son a stone when he asked for a loaf of bread, or a snake when he asked for a fish? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give food, good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask him? Matthew chapter 7, verse 9 to 11. In the scripture passage above, Jesus is teaching us about the love of his heavenly Father. Yet, this teaching of Jesus also applies to our spiritual father, Joseph. He is an icon of the Heavenly Father. In Joseph's steadfast love, we can have total confidence. The life and work of St. Luigi Ganala offer an example of having total confidence in Joseph. Born and raised in Italy, St. Luigi spent his entire priesthood doing corporal and spiritual works of mercy for others. He looked after orphans, cared for those with mental and physical disabilities, helped abandon elderly people, clothed the homeless, and fed the poor. Zealous to help everyone in need, he founded two religious congregations to continue performing the works of mercy, the Servants of Charity and the Daughters of Mary. Devotion to Joseph was at the heart of St. Luigi's life and mission, He made certain that both of the religious communities he founded strove to be constant union with Joseph, seeing in him a model and a patron for all their charitable works in the many homes St. Luigi established to meet the needs of others. He emphasized that devotion to Joseph needed to flourish, especially devotion to Joseph as the patron of the dying because he believed that the works of mercy were fruitless if they did not help people acquire a real relationship with the Lord and experience a holy and happy death like that of Joseph. St. Luigi's devotion to Joseph was so well known that St. Pope Pius X invited him to build a church near the Vatican in honor of Joseph. St. Luigi was delighted by the invitation of the Pope and began construction immediately. Not surprisingly, Luigi dedicated the new church to honoring Joseph's holy and happy death. The church took two, took four years to complete and was consecrated on March 19, 1912. The church St. Luigi built to, in honor of St. Joseph is located in the Trafale region of Rome. It is known as San Giuseppe al Trafale. St. Pope Pius X had also encouraged St. Luigi to initiate an apostolate that would offer daily prayers for the suffering and the dying. In 1913, St. Luigi launched an international association of intercessors for the suffering and the dying. He named the association the Pious Union of St. Joseph, and St. Pope Pius X became the first official member The headquarters of the Pious Union of St. Joseph is located right next to the church of San Giuseppe al Tranfole. International branches of the Pious Union of St. Joseph are located throughout the world. In the United States, the Pious Union of St. Joseph is headquartered in Grass Lake, Michigan. My dear St. Joseph, be with me living, be with me dying, and obtain for me a favorable judgment from Jesus. Be a merciful Savior. Pope Leo XIII. St. Joseph, my dear Father, gaze upon me from heaven. Detach me from the things of earth. Obtain for me purity of heart, love of God, and final perseverance. Blessed Bartolo Longo. Please remember to pray the litany of St. Joseph.